Well, welcome to our show today where we talk about the mind, mind the body, body, and the relationship. Ah, oh, and so today we have a guest, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Kathleen Scott, and I'm a student here at the Counseling House. I'm doing my master's in counseling psychology through Yorkville, and I'm also a nurse part-time. Ah, and you're about halfway through your practicum right now. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to be looking at the end of it in August. <laughs> I bet you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the uh, interests that you have is to do with self-care. Yes, it's very important, and it is the act that you deliberately do to take care of yourself. Mm. And the odd perception we have is that it's a selfish act to oh. be taking care of yourself. And I wonder why that is. I wonder too. Maybe it's because it's to do with yourself as opposed to anybody else. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship with self, mm -hmm. first and foremost. But the, the irony of it is that the better you take care of yourself, the better you're able to take care of other people. Mm. And the more resilient you are, and the more empowered you are within yourself and you'll be able to live independently for a much longer period of time in your life. So it really benefits other people and shows that you really care about yourself if you're taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that does seem to be an issue, doesn't it? Especially when I think about our profession, the profession of nursing mm -hmm. really has a difficult time mm -hmm. caring for so many others and being on such a nasty schedule as well. <laughs> That it's very hard yes. to actually put in the time, the effort, and the energy to uh, care for yourself. To focus on yourself definitely is different when you're used to taking care of so many different people in your life. Mm -hmm. And we're really raised to be nurturers and to think of other people all the time. And like I said, it's the perception seems to be that it's selfish to take care of yourself, but it isn't. It's very important. It is, definitely. Do you find that there's a gender difference in regards to self-care? Well, you have to be careful in terms of talking about gender differences, of course, but I think that um, the nursing profession is still predominantly women, and True. it's a very nurturing profession, and um, quite often it's still a um, mom that's in the home taking care of the kids. But there's lots of dads out there that are doing that too and thinking of their family and caring for them as well. So I think it applies to both genders for sure. And men need to take care of themselves just as much to be able to live a long, independent life and um, stay healthy. Mm hmm yes. There's a lot of responsibilities, isn't there, in regards to the roles that we take on every day. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pressure involved with those responsibilities as well. Definitely. And sometimes they can be overwhelming. Overwhelming to the system, overwhelming to the family system, right? Yes, and the overwhelm is important to look at in terms of what you are doing your life with your life, what you don't want to do, and the things you're doing with your life that you do want to do. So that could be in terms of professional or home life, family life, mm. so many things. To look at the stressors and evaluate them and say, what is causing me stress and what can I actually do about that? And what, how much control do I have over these things in my life? So true. Whether it's a situation or a relationship that isn't working for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So kind of like what, what gives me energy and what takes energy away from me. You want to get away from the things that are depleting your energy. So maybe perhaps making a no list. So things that you no longer wish to be doing. Mm. For example, I don't know, checking your emails at night or texting on your phone before bed, <laughs> which we many are guilty of doing. But I think that if we do things that are more energizing, then we come across as happier, more content people. Oh, okay. So how does one know uh, how to do things differently? How do you know how to do that? So there's things that you need to perhaps give up on, but the truth is is that we do what we do for a reason. So we're getting mm -hmm. something out of it. Mm -hmm. right? So how do you then uh, decide how much of it that you really uh, ought to be doing? Mm -hmm. Finding the balance is key, definitely. Yeah. 
So, and there are lots of things that we just have to do with life. Mm. And especially professionally, you may not be able to choose what kind of activities you're doing because it's part of the job. But I think you can be inspired from realizing what got you into that work, for example, in the beginning, or what drew you to that relationship in the beginning. And remember to be grateful for the things that you appreciate about it. And if it's come to a problem, uh, it's important to address it with the person or the situation at work, for example, and really try to make changes for the better. And everybody around you will benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to know what the blessings are. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> exactly. Yes, because things can always get worse. <laughs> they can. And I think that if things are getting worse in your life and your situation needs to be addressed and that you're in a growth period and mm. it's a time for opportunity and to face challenges. So perhaps you're bored at work and this is getting worse because you are still going along with the day-to-day -day activities that you're not enjoying. It's important to ask for new uh, projects at work in terms of personal development and growth. Mm. And maybe take a look at other activities you'd like to be doing that will um, complement your work in terms of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's many different areas in regards to self-care, isn't there? There are. Mm -hmm. Mental, emotional, physical, spiritual. They're all important to keep that balance from a holistic part, point of view. Oh, okay. So let's um, let's go through a few. Okay. Right? So what are some psychological aspects in regards to self-care that would be helpful to people? I think being real with yourself, being honest with yourself, and allowing yourself to acknowledge your emotions and your thoughts that are positive in your life and maybe not so positive in your life. Mm. And, but allowing yourself to acknowledge the honesty of it and addressing those issues. Mm -hmm. So not being negative, but then not being overly positive either. Well, I think you have to acknowledge the shadow self for sure. If you keep repressing that, then I think it just gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. It needs to be acknowledged. But surrounding yourself with positivity and like-minded people, I think, helps bring out the best in yourself and in your life. Mm -hmm. And having some sort of mantra that you say to yourself can be really, really helpful too. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, this too will pass. This too will pass. This is temporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Uh huh. And so what about physical? Physical. All the research I've read with school and nursing, it all goes back to good practical living. Ah. Right? So sleeping well, eating right, staying hydrated, exercising, good basic living. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Good balanced living, right? Right. A little bit of activity goes a long way. Mm, it does. Right? You don't have to overexert or overdo. And I struggle with the idea of why does it feel like a challenge to live a good, balanced life? Why is it so hard to talk yourself into going for that walk that you know after you're going to feel great, but when you're laying on the couch watching Netflix, it doesn't feel like such a great idea at the time. I struggle with that one. Why do you have to talk yourself into taking care of yourself? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, maybe it's because there's been an overexertion of energy, too many energy drains. Perhaps. And mm -hmm. and so vegging appears to be the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's taking time for reflection. Uh -huh. And that t takes me to the point of how uh, self-care is different for different people. Mm. So for someone more introverted, perhaps they need that time, more time for reflection. So true. Whereas an extroverted person maybe needs to be out with other people and that energizes them. Ah. Spiritually speaking, maybe someone needs some personal meditation or journaling, whereas someone else might need a more structured religious environment like a congregation. Mm -hmm. Find that energizing. It could be somebody finds a big trip um, fun and exciting, whereas someone else might just like to get their hair done or delegate a chore, a household chore to a family member. It's 
so different for different people. And even throughout your own life, your self-care needs change as your life, your self-care needs change as your life changes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's so true in this day and age, work expands to fill the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to get yourself off balance and not have those personal um, things that you like to do. Our culture is so work focused. It, is. <laughs> it really is. And I think in, in these times where people have been home more and having to find other things to do other than work or perhaps working from home, I'm hoping that some good will come out of that and mm -hmm. that the world will slow down a little bit and not go back to that ultra fast pace that we were at before because I think it's reflected in so many issues in our culture like mental health issues and addiction issues mm -hmm. that it just wasn't working and so hopefully we'll have learned something from this about self-care and not to put all our energy into working mm -hmm. well that would be the hope yeah. we'll have to see how it is that it all plays okay. out yeah well thank you kathleen for coming in and talking to us today about self-care is there anything else that you would like to add I just think that if you do a trial period of a 15-day self-care plan and you can see what, how you feel before and how you feel after and see what works for you. Hmm, that sounds like a challenge. Okay. <laughs> All right. So maybe that's what it is that we need to do. Set up a challenge. See what it is that works for you, 15 days, mm -hmm. and then do an assessment. Well, thank you so much for watching and we'll be interested to hear what it is that comes from your challenge. Anyway, give us a like, uh, email us, and subscribe. All right, bye for now. Bye.